Hi! Welcome back! So yung pag-uusapan naman natin this video is Legislative Department. Pero mag update lang ako. So yung gagawin natin is Legislative Department and then mag upload ako ng Executive Department. Tapos stop muna sa Polyrev. Babalik tayo sa Civrev. Tapos dun sa Civrev, um, pag-uusapan natin yung property. After property, i-alternate na natin yung polyrev at crimrev. So, sa polyrev, judicial department, concom. Tapos, sa uh, crimrev naman, i-start na natin yung book 2. Tapos, pag ma-start na natin yung book 2 sa crimrev, sisimulan na rin natin yung constitu. Tapos, hopefully, masama natin yung PIL by December. And then, babalik tayo sa CIVREV, yung last topic ng CIVREV 1, which is succession. Tapos, next year na natin, i-start yung CIVREV 2. So, yung CIVREV 2, kasama doon yung mga sales, credrans, Ano pa? LTD. Basta madami yan. Tapos, commercial law review next year na rin. Except taxation siguro. Kasi, yung sa tax, kahit naman napasa ko na yung tax 1, tax 2, at tax rev, I, I sort of winged it lang eh. And I'm not very confident mag-lecture about tax Cause feeling ko marami pa dyang iba na mas magaling mag lecture about taxation. So, hindi ko siya forte. Hindi ako CPA. Kaya, mas okay siguro kapag CPA na nag-law or CPA lawyer yung mag-discuss ng taxation. Remrev, kaya ko yan i-discuss. Labor. Yan. So, lahat actually, except tax rev, I, I don't think I can discuss tax rev. Ayun. So, legislative department. What is legislative power? Legislative power is the authority to make laws and to alter and repeal them. It is vested by the Constitution in the Congress except to the extent reserved to the people by the provision on by the provisions on initiative and referendum and it is a derivative and delegated power so napag-usapan na natin to sa previous videos diba yung yung police power inherent in the state that's kasama sa police power is the power to enact laws and sino ba talaga yung sovereign sa isang state it's the people so, the people, us, lahat tayo na citizens, nag-agree tayo through majority will na magiging Republican yung government natin na style. When you say Republican, magkakaroon tayo ng representatives. Hindi tayo parang Greek times sa panahon ni Plato na uh, by show of hands, lagi kapag magdidesisyon. So, sa atin, we elect representatives tapos yung mga representatives natin, sila na yung mag show of hands dun sa Congress. Sila yung gagawa ng batas para sa atin. Kasi, sila yung representatives natin eh. Sila yung gusto ng majority na i-represent yung, kunwari, kapag ka-senator, representatives natin sila sa national level. So, there are 24 senators na binoboto natin. Nagbumboto tayo ng 12 every 3 years. Tama ba? 3 years? Yeah, para 3 years. Pero 6 years yata yung term nila. Sorry. Pero every, yeah, tama. I, I stand by it. Every 3 years, nag elect tayo ng 12. Tapos may matitirang 12 dyan. Tapos yung 12 na luma, papalitan, kasi 6 years yung term nila, so, ganon. Explain ko later. 
Pero yon nag-elect tayo ng 12 senators every 3 years at may 24 na nakaupo doon. And yung 24 na yon yun yung nagre-represent ng will ng people at a national level. Meron naman tayong House of Representatives. So, yung sa House of Representatives, dun yung mga congressmen natin. Yung mga congressmen natin, sila naman yung nagre-represent ng will of the people na constituents nila. Like, for example, every legislative district, for example, sa province ko sa Iloilo, meron kaming congressman. So, or congressmen. So, yung mga congressmen namin dyan, sila yung nagre-represent ng mga gusto at mga ngailangan ng mga ilonggo. So, yung ibang mga probinsya, meron din yan sila. Or ibang mga cities, meron din yan sila. So, lahat supposedly represented kasi meron kayong binoto dyan na uupo sa kongreso na magre-represent ng needs nyo as constituents ng isang district. Kasi, ba diba, na-discuss na rin natin yung decentralization, yung importance na kasi kapag sa centralized ka lang, hindi mo makikita yung lahat eh. Imposible, ba diba? Sa dami ba naman? And yung, yung ano, yung mga certain tao sa isang legislative district, yung nagko-compose na, yung people composing a legislative district, may unique needs sila na sila din nakakaalam. So, for example, sa amin, sa Iloilo, yung pinaka-industry namin is nasa fishing kasi sa tabi kami ng dagat eh. Dun, dun yung sa amin. So, importante sa amin yung industry na yon Sa ibang mga lugar naman, yung industry na importante sa kanila is, for example, kapag landlocked sila or kapatagan sila, for example, sa kanila is ano farming or agricultural products. So, kunwari, mayroong specific pa, like, bigas, ba diba? So, yun yung pinaka-affected sila, yun yung importante sa kanila. Iba-iba yung pangangailangan ng bawat districts. That's why meron kang representative sa Congress para ma-make sure ng representative sa Congress na hindi nababypass, well, mali yung term na bypass, hindi na i-ignore yung pangangailangan ng constituents niya. Hindi siya yung lalaban para hindi prejudiced yung constituents niya sa kung ano man yung policies na ma-form ng Congress as a body. So, siya yung mag-voice out ng concerns ng constituents niya. Anyway, More on that later, kasi aside sa legislative districts, mayroon pa tayong party list representatives, which is meron naman siyang nare-represent na iba. But, yun yung point. I hope you get the beauty of the legislative department. The legislative power of the Philippine Congress is plenary. Meaning, kahit anong topic, pwede niyang gawa ng batas. Kahit anong subject, pwede nilang pag-usapan. Meron namang lip- limitations na n- dapat laid out sa constitution. Pero plenary talaga yung power nila. The Congress is bicameral and is composed of Senate and House of Representatives. Bicameral. Yung tatandaan nyo dyan yung word na bi. Meaning two. two houses. We have the upper house and then the lower house. So, when you say Congress, it's not just the congressmen. Congress includes your senators. So, the Congress is composed of the Senate, nandun yung mga senators mo, and then the House of Representatives, nandun yung congressmen mo. There are two kinds of congressmen. Yung sinabi ko kanina, legislative uh, representatives or district representatives, sorry, legislative district kasi yung ibig ko sabihin, district representatives and party list representatives. Okay. 
So regular elections, always second Monday of May. Every three years yan. For the Senate, half, yun yung 12 of the 24, are elected every three years. So explain ko na bakit ganon. Kasi, syempre pag gagawa ka ng batas, ano yan eh, yung, yung legislative power nila kasi, pwede silang gumawa ng batas, pero hindi permanent yon. Ibig sabihin, pwede rin nilang palitan yung batas, i-repeal. Except yung constitution, syempre, na-discuss na natin, merong mechanism yan para, bag- para baguhin. Iba naman yung level ng constitution. Pero, we're talking about the regular statutes. When I say statutes, I mean laws. Laws na enacted by Congress. Yun yung mga Republic Act or RA 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mo dyan, ba? Okay, so continue natin. Special elections. In case of vacancy in Congress, no special election will be called if vacancy occurs. So, ito ah, pwede special elections. Pero bawal kung, yan, may dalawa yan. Bawal magka-special election at least 18 months before the next regular election for members of the Senate. Bakit? Hintayin mo na lang. Kasi, Bakit hintayin na lang? Gastos din magpa-election. ba? So, 18 months na lang din naman yan. Hintayin na lang yung next election para i-fill yung vacancy. Yung second naman, na bawal mag-special election is if at least one year before the next regular election for members of the House of Representatives. Okay? Yun yung dalawang bawal magka-special election. Again, merong regular election, second Monday of May, every three years, pero meron ding special elections sa tuwing may vacancy sa Congress, whether sa Senate or sa House of Representatives. Pero bawal ang special election if kung may vacancy sa Senate at least 18 months before the next regular election, kung may vacancy sa House of Representatives at least one year before the next regular election for members of the House of Representatives. So, in case of vacancy in Congress, a special election may be called. <laughs> Parang na weird na ako sabi ko yung called. Anyway, a special election may be called to, fi- to fill such a vacancy in the manner prescribed by law. But the senator or congressman thus elected by special election shall serve only for the unexpired term. So, if you fail na lang, tapos kung meron pang natirang 2 years dyan, magsuserve lang siya up to the 2 years. Hindi nga pwedeng i-invoke na, ah, okay, so, may 6 years pa ako. No, hindi ganun, kahit na-elect siya. Kasi, hindi na magiging parang sabay. Nandun lang siya to fill the vacancy, eh. The particular chamber of Congress, where vacancy occurs, must pass either a resolution, if Congress is in session, or the Senate President or the Speaker, as the case may be. So, yung, yung Senate, yung upper house, headed by the Senate President. Yung House of Representatives, yun yung mga lower house, yung mga congressmen, headed by the Speaker of the House. So, the, either the Senate President or the Speaker of the House, as the case may be, must sign a certification if Congress is not in session. If in session, resolution. If not in session, then dapat may certification ng Senate President if yung vacancy is nasa Senate or Speaker of the House if yung vacancy is nasa Congress. So, yung certification is declaring the existence of the vacancy and calling for a special election to be held within 45 to 90 days from the date of the resolution or certification as the case may be. Ulitin natin. So, pag may vacancy. Okay? Pag may vacancy, pwedeng magpa special elections. Yung special election, iba to sa regular election. Kasi yung regular elections, second Monday of May, every three years. Yun yung lahat. ba? mag elect ng bago. mag elect ng bagong 12 sa Senate. And mag elect ng lahat ng mga bagong congressmen sa House of Representatives. Pero, pag may vacancy, paano ba nagkaka-vacancy? Pag namatay, yung congressman or yung senador, as the case may be, 
congressman or senator, as a case may be. Pag namatay, pag nag-resign, diba? So, ang dami. Or pag nakulong. So, kapag ka, ano, kapag ka may vacancy, pwedeng magpatawag ng special election. Wait lang, hindi ko sure kung pag nakulong, magkakaroon ng vacancy. I- just put a pin on it and tignan natin sa notes ko kung, kung pwede. Or if alam nyo, lagay nyo sa comment section pag hindi ko ma-mention later, makalimutan ko. Pero yun, pag, pag may vacancy, pwedeng magka-special election, hindi kailangang hintayin ang regular election. Bakit? Kasi napaka-importante ng ginagawa nila. Paano yun pag-congressman? Paano na represented? Paano na magig Paano na magiging represented yung legislative district niya, yung constituents ng legislative district niya, eh wala siya doon, ba? Diba? So, unfair naman yon para sa legislative district na. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng special election. Pero may mga condition yan. Una, dapat, kung yung vacancy na sa Senate, dapat hindi, hindi 18 months na lang bago yung regular election. Kapag sa House of Representatives naman yung vacancy, dapat hindi one year na lang before yung next regular election. Kapag yung vacancy sa Senate or sa sa House of Repre- Representatives, before magkaroon ng special election, kailangan i-officially declare na merong, merong vacancy. So, paano, ginagaw, paano dinideclare na merong vacancy? Kung nasa session yung Congress, mag- ano sila ng resolution. Kung wala naman, magpapas ng resolution. Kung wala naman, kung hindi in session yung Congress, kung sa Senate yung vacancy, kailangan i-certify ni Senate President na meron ngang vacancy. And, magko-call siya for special election dahil nga merong vacancy. Kapag sa, ano naman, House of Representatives, si Speaker of the House yung magsa-certify na merong vacancy and magko-call siya ng special election. And dapat yung pag-call ng special election, it must be held within 45 to 90 days from the date of resolution or certification. Again, hindi from the date of vacancy. From the date kung kailan na ipasa ang resolution or certification as the case may be. So, resolution kapag in session, certification kapag hindi in session yung Congress. Now, let's talk about salaries nila. The salaries of senators and congressmen shall be determined by law. Sino gumagawa ng law? Sila din. That is why, isipin nyo, ay sila gumagawa ng, ado, kung magkano yung sahod. Ibig sabihin pa din nilang taasan ng sobra. Diba? Hindi. Hindi ganun kadali yun. No increase in said compensation shall take effect until after the expiration of the full term of all the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives approving such increase. So, ganito yan. Meron kang con- Congress, di ba? Meron niya silang... T- Ewan ko kung pang ilan na ngayon, pero check natin na para sure. Um, Senate of the Philippines. Kung pang ilang Congress na, 19th, 19th ba? Senators of the 19th Congress. 19th na daw. So, pang 19 na sila na batch, parang yun yung, <laughs> ano nila, alam mo yung pag-graduate kayo, batch 2023, batch 2024, ganun, sila 19th. Sila yung pang-19 na na-elect. Ganon. So, naka-19 elections na since. Nagkaroon ng Congress. Kasi before ng Congress, may tinatawag sila pam- pambansa, ano, something. So, basta iba yung tawag sa Congress dati eh. So, time ni Marcos. Shit, nakalimutan ko kung ano. Basta yon iba yung tawag sa kanila. Uh, that's why... Hindi RA, hindi Republic Act yung law stone. Um, BP ba? Batasang pambansa ba? Kasi PD sa president yan, presidential decrees. Anyway, okay? Nakalimutan ko. Kung curious kayo, i-research na lang. Basta, ip- 
pang 19th na sila. Ewan ko kung tama yung nag-google ko, pero 19th Congress na daw. So, kung may law na pinasa to increase compensation, dapat lahat ng members ng 19th Congress dapat hindi maaapektuhan nun. Hindi sila dapat mag-enjoy ng increase na yon Dapat yung 20th yung makapag-enjoy. Pero wait lang, hindi necessarily 20th, eh. baka yung 21st na. Kasi, di ba nga sa, sa Senate, 24 yung senators, pero 12 yung ni-elect mo every 3 years. So, part ng 19th Congress is yung mga sa 18th Congress pa. Tama, ba diba? Ganon. Pwede silang part ng 18th and 19th. So, hanggat gagraduate, <laughs> hanggat, ano, wala na, hanggat wala ng member sa, nasa type, again, pwedeng, pwedeng, ano, pwedeng, for example, example lang to si Drelon, kunwari. Si Drelon, kunwari, na elect siya sa 18th Congress tapos pagdating ng 19th Congress andyan pa rin yung term niya nandun pa siya sa 12 na hindi papalitan kunwari lang so yung ano nagpasa sila ng increase kunwari sa 19th ibig sabihin matatapos na yung term ni Drelon sa 19th so sa 20th wala na siya ba diba? so siya, sila, sa 18th Congress, pag natapos na yung term nila, hindi na sila pwede dun sa 20th. Pag na re sila, doesn't matter, ha? Iba naman, eh. Hindi mo tinitignan yung tao dito, eh. Tinitignan mo yung term niya kung natapos. ba diba? Expiration of full term, eh. So, 18th siya, ba diba? 19th. So, by 20th, si Drillon and yung batchmates niya dun sa 18th. Tapos na. Pwede na ba? Ma- pwede na ba sa 20th? Hindi pa rin. Kasi, kunwari naman si, example lang, um, si Robin Padilla. ba diba? Para sabihin nyo naman fair, dilawan yung in-example kong isa. Dapat hindi dilawan yung next kong example. Kasi, we're not, ano, uh, hindi tayo ano, sa politics dito. Anyway, si Robin Padilla sa 19th. ba diba? Bawal pa rin sa 20th. Kasi, nai-implement yung increase. Kasi, sa 20th, anjad pa rin si Robin Padilla. Hindi pa tapos yung term niya. Kasi, 6 years, ba diba? Nagsimula yung 3 years niya dito sa 19th Congress. Sa 20th Congress, dun yung mauubos yung 6 years niya. So, yung batchmate nila, Robin, dun sa 90th, 19th Congress, ano, hindi pa nila pwedeng ma-enjoy yung increase ng salary na pinasa nila. So, by 20th, wala pang makaka- enjoy non Okay? Wala pa. Kahit yung mga bago, hindi nila pwedeng ma-enjoy. So, kailan? 21st, pwede na ba? Pwede na. Tama. Kasi, si Robin Padilla and yung mga, ano niya, batchmates sa 19th, by 20th, hanggang 20th lang sila. Pag 21st, Wala na, ba? Diba? Wala na yung si 18th, wala na yung si 19th. So, okay na yung 21st. Pwede na implement yung increase sa salary. Dun pa lang mag effect yung ginawa nila nung 19th, ba? Diba? So, yun. I hope okay yung explanation ko. What happens naman kapag ma-elect ulit sila Drillon at si, si Robin at yung ano, kung sino pa yung andon sa 19th Congress, 18th Congress, what if ma-elect sila dun sa 21st? Bawal pa rin ba? Dahil nandun sila sa pum- nagpasa ng law? Hindi. Pwede na sila sa 21st given na manalo sila. Kasi no increase in said compensation shall take effect until after the expiration of the full term. Okay? of all the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives approving such increase. Huwag na nating anuhin yung ano sa House of Representatives kasi yung sa kanila nag elect na naman sila eh. eh. wait lang. Tingnan natin kung ano yung term ng ano, baka mali ako dito. House of Representatives ko. Gaano katagal yung term nila? 
three years, tama nga. So, every ano sila, ba 19th Congress? Pagdating 20th Congress, ubos na silang lahat. <laughs> Yun, so, hindi, yung sa senators lang naman yung titigdan mo talaga dito eh. Ayun. So, pag na-elect sila ulit dun sa 21st, okay lang. Mafe-feel na nila pag nanalo sila kung yung increase na ginawa nila. Term yung na ano mo dito, hindi yung tao. Okay. So, the Senate, it is a chamber of Congress composed of 24 members elected at large national level by the qualified voters of the Philippines. It can be said that the number can be changed only by constitutional amendment. The phrase, as may be provided by law in Section 2, has reference to the mechanics for electing the senators at large and not to the number of senators. Section 2 of Article 6. So, section lang yung sasabihin ko dito, basta given na yan na sa topic na to, yung legislative department, Article 6 yan. So, what are the qualifications to be a senator? So, the following are the continuing qualifications. Anong ibig sabihin ng continuing? Dapat, by the time na tatakbo ka, ano, or sa day ng election, hanggang sa manalo ka, hanggang sa hawak-hawak mo na yung pwesto, hanggang sa matapos yung term mo, dapat napopossess mo yung qualifications to. Hindi pwedeng mawala. Pag nawala to, during the time that you're serving your term as a senator, wala, disqualified ka. Kasi, wala na eh. Hindi ka, for example, in the middle of your term, bigla ka naging American citizen. ba diba? Gets yung problem dito. Senator ka ng Pilipinas, tapos bigla ka nagpa, nagpa US citizen. <laughs> diba? Nasaan yung loyalties mo? Eh, very, ano yung, you are a public servant. ba diba? Hindi pwede. So, continuing qualifications for a person to be a member of Senate. First, natural born citizen of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act to acquire or perfect their perf, perfect perfect their Philippine citizenship. Iba yung perfect na 100 sa perfect na verb. So, yun. A natural born citizen who loses his citizenship by naturalization in another country but later is repatriated recovers his status of being a natural born citizen and therefore is qualified to be a member of congress so pero dapat on the day of election citizen ka na hindi pwedeng magpa-naturalize ka and then magpabalik ka during your term because you will lose diba you will lose your qualification your continuing qualification Yung ibig sabihin nito, yun yung mga, kung kunwari sila Grace Poe, mga ganyan, yung mga nag, ibang bansa, nag, yung natural born citizen of the Philippines, na lose nila yung citizenship nila, pero nagparipatriate sila. So dahil nagparipatriate sila, merong law yan, merong RA yan, nakalimutan kung ano, pe, meron ding mga kaso yan. So, sabi dun sa law, kapag ka natural born citizen ka, nawala yung citizenship mo, tapos nagparipatriate ka, babalik ka sa status ng natural born citizen. Hindi ka magiging naturalized alien kasi yun yung pinaka-base mo, natural born citizen ka. So, nare-recover yung status of being a natural born citizen. Therefore, pwede ka pa rin tumakbo to be a member of Congress or Senator. Next qualification, at least 35 years of age on the day of the election. Hindi pwedeng sabihin mo na, ay, June 30 pa naman mag a ng office, so by June 30, 35 na ako. Pero at the time of the election, second Monday of May, 34 pa lang ako. Hindi. Dapat, second Monday of May, na may election, dapat 35 years old ka na. Able to read and write, yun yung next qualification, meaning literate lang. Hindi kailangang may educational ano ka talaga, attainment or mataas yung pinag-aralan mo, hindi kailangang tapos ka ng elementary, high school, college. So, kahit wala kang tinapos, as long as marunong kang magbasa, marunong kang magsulat. Yun lang yun. Next is registered voter. Dapat registered voter sa Philippines and resident of the Philippines for not less than, not less than ah, meaning at least, Two years 
immediately preceding the day of the election. So, the day before the election, dapat two years ka ng citizen dito sa a uh, resident, not citizen, resident dito sa Pilipinas. So, resident, kung saan yung domicile mo, at saan ka nag-establish ng residence mo. Okay, so ano ba yung residence? Residence is the place where one habitually resides and to which when he is absent, he has the intention of returning. So, iba yung meaning ng residence na normal sa residence din sa ibang laws, sa residence sa context ng legislative department dito sa consti, sa qualifications. Iba din. So, sa context ng qualifications ng senators or congressmen, yung residence, yung term, as used in election law, is synonymous with domicile which imports not only intention to reside in a fixed place, but also a personal presence in that place coupled with conduct indicative of such intention. Iba kasi yung term ng domicile with permanence sa resident. For example, yung domicile ko, kunwari, sa probinsya ko, tas dito sa Manila, resident ako. Kasi dito ako nag-aaral, dito ako nagtatrabaho, Pero yung pinaka-domicile ko talaga sa probinsya ko. Sa context ng election law though, yung residence, domicile, may sense of permanence. While residence is domicile in election laws, domicile is not residence because domicile requires the fact of presence coupled with animus manendi, intention to remain, or animus revertendi, the intention to return when absent. So, to acquire a domicile by choice, the following must concur. Concur, meaning, dalawa to dapat, hindi to either, but end. Da- hindi to or, end to, meaning, dalawa, kailangan, present. Again, as mentioned, animus manendi, residence or bodily presence in the new locality and an intention to remain there, intention to remain there, based sa actions, or uh, conduct indicative of such intention and animus non revertendi an intention to abandon the old domicile if you're changing domicile so for example if I want to change my domicile dito sa Manila then I have to show ma- animus manendi which is I'm staying here meaning I have a home here and animus non revertendi that Based on my actions, I've established a home here. I want to abandon my old domicile. Na parang, I want to stay here for good. Like, sure, you can travel, you can go places, but parang, saan ka ba magsiset up talaga na kung saan ka talaga uuwi lagi? Diba? Yun yung domicile mo. Yun yung context ng residence sa election law, sa qualifications ng members of Congress. A person's domicile, once established, is considered to continue and will not be deemed lost until a new one is established. One domicile lang at a time. To successfully effect a change of domicile, one must demonstrate an actual removal or an actual change of domicile, a bona fide intention of abandoning the former place of residence and establishing a new one, and definite acts which correspond with a purpose. In other words, there must basically be animus manendi coupled with animus non revertendi. The purpose to remain in or at the domicile of choice must be for an indefinite period of time. The change of residence must be voluntary and the residence at the place chosen chosen for the new domicile must be actual. An intention to abandon cannot be legally inferred from his act of establishing a home elsewhere or otherwise conducting activities therein in the absence of clear showing that he has decided to adopt a new residence. So, for example, if you're just here in Manila to study for four years for law school or sabihin na natin, 
dito ka nag-college, and then dito kayo nag-law school. Such as in my case, uh, medyo matagal na ako dito sa Manila. Parang over a decade na. But I always go back to the province. Meaning, although I spend more time here in Manila than in the province for the past decade, that doesn't mean that I have changed my domicile. Yung permanent address ko when I fill out forms is still, you know, my home address sa province. Still my provincial address. And yung address ko dito is just my residence. Meaning, even if even if I am conducting my activities here, because wala pa siyang sense of permanence and I still go back home, even, it's not about the amount of time that you spend eh. It's your intention to stay. And dahil yung purpose ko dito is to study and to work, but not to quote-unquote settle, then hindi siya masasabing domicile ko. So, saan ako registered voter? Doon pa rin sa province, not here. I don't vote here. I have to go back home. Doon ako registered voter. Mga important mail matter ko, still pinapadala pa rin sa permanent address ko back at home. So, even if I just, even if I spend the most, uh, even if I spend the most part of the year here, it doesn't mean I am domiciled here. So, if I'm gonna run as congressman, I cannot run as a congressman here. I should be running sa province, even if I spend most of my time here. So, yun, yun. And very, ano to eh, it's very important that we understand this because ang daming election contest, ang daming kaso, and ang daming pwedeng problems sa bar involving this, yung whether there is a ano, domicile, kung saan yung, kung qualified ba siyang mag-run for, for that district as, you know, the congressman or not, di ba? Merong kaso, ang daming kaso niyan. Like, for example, yung kay involving Imelda Marcos, di ba? Saan daw yung domicile niya? I think tumakbo siya sa Ormoc. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. Basta sa, some, somewhere sa province. Pero, di ba, meron silang bahay dito. Doesn't mean na may bahay ka dito sa Manila. Diyan yung domicile mo. It could be na nagkoconduct ka lang ng activities mo here. Kaya meron kang bahay here. Di ba? San ba, san ba, congress, san ba naging congressman si Pacquiao? Si Sarangani, di ba? Pero dati hindi naman siya Sarangani. Nag- change siya ng domicile. Si ang daming ang daming issue niyan, like kung saan yung domicile mo kasi it could spell kung saan ka tatakbo. 'Di ba? Saan ka pwedeng tumakbo? Kung gusto mong tumakbo sa isang lugar, kailangan mong mag maging resident doon for at least two years ano preceding the day of the election. Like for example si Isko Moreno daw, hindi ako sure ah. Rinig ko lang parang chismis hindi verified chismis to. Pero, i-example lang natin. Mayor siya ng Manila, pero nag-change residence daw siya. Tapos, tagamunting lupa na ba siya ngayon? Or Makati? Hindi ko sure. So, yung question is, saan siya tatakbo next? So, kung mag-establish siya ng domicile or residence niya, residence sa context ng election law, meaning domicile, kung mag-establish siya ng domicile siya, niya sa munting lupa, hindi siya pwedeng tumakbo sa Manila. Doon siya tatakbo sa Muntinlupa. Pero, di natin alam. Baka kasi may residence na siya sa Muntinlupa, pero yung domicile niya talaga sa Manila. ba? Diba? So, yon Kaya, tricky siya. So, now let's talk about the theory of legal impossibility. The theory would be legally impossible to impose the residency requirement in a newly created political district. 
However, the Supreme Court refused to apply the theory because it ruled that the new political district is not created out of thin air. It is carved out from a part of a real and existing geographical area. These people who actually lived in the old municipality prior to the creation of the new legislative district can fulfill the residency requirement. at a juicy. Pag-usapan natin yung Makati at Tagig. Di ba? So, nagagawan sila ng, ano, territory. So, anong implication? Di ba nanalo si Tagig? Na-award sa kanya yung ibang parcels of land na dating nasa Makati. Old decision na din naman to, pero ngayon lang na-implement. Tapos, parang inano ulit. Un- until meron na talagang definite declaration recently na yun nga, owned siya by Tagig yung some, some portions of Makati. So, naglilipat na, ba diba? So, politics. Usap tayo ng politics. Sino yung, ano, nasa Tagig ngayon? Yung politician sa Tagig ngayon? Yung incumbent ngayon? Mga Cayetano, Right? Sa, Maki- sa Makati naman, sino yung incumbent? Mga binay. Diba? Binay naman yung ano, sa Makati. What happens now? Dahil yung ibang portions ng Makati magiging tagig. That means na yung mga <laughs> There's a certain binay there, ba? Diba, na nakatira sa portion na dating Makati Tagig na. So, sabi dito, kung sino yung nakatira dun sa old municipality, pag nag-iba na ng legislative district yon, pwede nga nang i-fulfill yung residency requirement. That means, si binay na nakatira dun, one of them can now run sa tagig fulfilling the residency requirement. So, ngayon, mga Cayetano will have to deal with the be nice. ba? Diba? So, ayun. Food for thought. <laughs> uh, an- isa magandang example is yung tagig. Tagig pa din. Dati parang part ng Rizal yan. Di ko sure. I-correct nyo ako pag mali ako. So, part yun ng Rizal before siya naging later naging tagig. So, ginawa siyang tagig ng mga tinga. So, sino yung pwedeng tumakbo? Kasi wala ngang tagig dati. Tapos nagkaroon na ng tagig. Ibig sabihin, pag meron ng tagig, pwede na siyang maging legislative district. Magkakaroon na siya ng congressman. Entitled siya magka-congressman. O kahit mayor, di ba? Kailangan pa rin naman ng residency requirement ng mayor. Pero, ano tayo eh? Um, consti. Senators yung pinag-uusapan natin. Or congresso. Lagyan natin congressman. Senator kasi kahit naman saan sa Pilipinas. So, sa usapang residence. Residency requirement. Dahil babago si Tagig nung time na bagong gawa siya, kahit sino pa tumakbo, sabi dito, you know, hindi nagsasubscribe yung Philippine Supreme Court sa theory of legal impossibility. Yung sabi dito, dapat nakatira ka sa old municipality sa part na yan ng Rizal na naging Tagig. Dapat nakatira ka dyan. Diba? So yung portion ng Rizal na naging Tagig, dapat ma-fulfill mo, dapat resident ka doon for at least two years the day pre- preceding preceding the day of the elections para pwede kang tumakbo as congressman or mayor pero congressman of that newly created legislative district okay so hindi kung sino lang dapat yung mga nakatira din doon sa area na yon yung ma- dapat ma-fulfill pa rin yung residency requirement. Of course, hindi mo sasabihin na yung residency, resident ka ng Rizal for like 2 years. Sabi mo, resident ka ng Tagig, that Tagig which was, you know, a part of Rizal. 
Okay. Comelec cannot add qualifications. The court struck down as unconstitutional Section 36 of RA No. 9165 of Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 as it sought to enlarge the qualification requirements of candidacy for senatorial position with a condition of the imp- completion of a mandatory drug test. Alam ko yung case ito eh. Nakalimutan ko yung title. Pero, story time ulit. kaso consolidated cases kasi to tapos parang bagong gawa ng hindi ko sure kung bagong gawa yung PIDEA time pero may PIDEA tapos meron pang isang task force tapos syempre drugs anti drugs eme di ba tapos um yun nga kakagawa ng ng comprehensive dangerous drugs act May part doon sa Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act na na-declare unconstitutional. Marami silang inano nun eh. Um, na parang nag-require sila ng mandatory drug test. Sabi doon, may mga Section 36, may A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Hindi ko na sure kung anong letters doon. Pero, doon sa consolidated petitions na nag Basically, sabi nila, alam ko na, SJS versus DDB. Yun yung case. Oh my God, alala ko pa. Papasan na ba ako ng barges? <laughs> ano, yung SJS versus DDB case. Consolidated cases siya. Uh, peti- may petition do ng senator na sinasabi na unconstitutional yung part ng law na nagsasabi na may mandatory drug test yung mga tatakbo. So, yun nga, na-enlarge nga yung qualifications na nakasaad sa constitution. Kasi clear naman sa constitution kano yung qualifications, ba Ano ulit yung qualifications? Natural born citizen, at least 35 years of age, able to read and write, registered voter, resident of the Philippines for not less than 2 years immediately preceding the day of the election. Ngayon, dahil nga kailangan magpa-drug test, dinagdagan mo. So, merong enlargement. So, declare ng Supreme Court na unconstitutional to. Ano yung mga ibang petitions? Ano daw, mandatory drug testing sa mga private uh, private companies. So, yung mga empleyado daw, may mandatory drug test, ganyan. Um, private and public actually, na employees. So, ito naman, sabi ng court dito, constitutional. Kasi, ano eh, um, merong prerogative yung private companies. Tapos, um, there's no way to battle like the drug problem to conduct yung reasoning ng court doon sa naalala ko, correct me if I'm wrong, is that kailangan yung drug tests. And there's no other way to conduct an effective drug test if not random na mandatory. Yun. So, Kaya, pwede yung companies na magparandom drug testing sa mga empleyado nila. And that's legal. That's constitutional, sabi ni Supreme Court. Settled na yan. Yung next question is public employees. Yung mga employees ng gobyerno. Sabi naman ng court doon, constitutional din. Pwede nga private, how much more pa yung public? ba Na, you know, you are at the service of the Filipino people. All the more, na parang mas higher yung uh, moral standard mo dyan, ba so, kung pwede sa private, pwede sa public. Parang ganun yung isang reasoning. Schools, meron din doon. Pwede bang mandatory drug testing sa schools? Yes, pwede. So, lahat ng yon tungkol sa mandatory drug testing sa consolidated cases na yon constitutional yung mandatory drug test, except, okay, merong na-declare na unconstitutional, merong section dyan, um, yun yung sa elective officials. Hindi pwedeng i-add yung qualifications. Okay, so term. Term of office for senators. So, as mentioned, six years commencing at noon on the 30th day of June following their election. Term limit, no senator shall serve for more than two consecutive terms. Meaning, pwede siyang mag-6 years, 19th Congress, so until 20th Congress siya, 
Pwede ba siyang tumakbo sa 21st Congress? Yes. Okay? So, pwede siyang mag another 6 years. So, total of 12 years. Pero pag na-serve out na na yung consecutive, kailangan consecutive, ha? Kailangan magpahinga, tapos pwede siyang tumakbo ulit. Bawal na naka-12 years siya, dere-derecho, tapos tatakbo siya so, ulit, bawal. Pause muna. Takbo ka na lang ulit after, ano, after 3 years. Tama ba? 3 years. Yeah. Kasi consecutive lang naman eh. Magkakaroon ulit ng election. Nagkakaroon ulit ng every, ng election every 3 years. So, hindi naman 6 years yung pahinga niya. 3 years lang yung pahinga niya. So, 12 post ng 3, 12. Paano naman pag yung style niya is 6 years na full term. So, isa. And then, papahinga siya. Tapos ulit, ba? Like, for example, tatakbo, tumakbo siya sa 19th Congress. 20th Congress, senador pa rin siya. 21st, hindi na siya tumakbo. Okay lang, ba? As long, pagka 22nd, tumakbo siya. Okay lang. Basta hindi dere-derechong, dapat yung pag dere hanggang 12 lang. Tapos pahinga. Okay lang kung 6, stop. Tapos na doon 6, stop. Okay lang yung ganun. Basta hindi siya maging 18 or, you know, 12 tapos next agad. Hindi pwedeng ganun. So, bawal mag-serve ng more than two consecutive terms. Voluntary renunciation of the office for any length of time shall not be considered as an interruption in the continuity of his service for the full term for which he was elected. So, for example, na-elect siya sa 19th Congress, tapos biglang gusto niya ang uh, 18th Congress pala. So, last term niya na ngayon, 19th Congress. Tapos, hindi niya tinapos, kasi gusto niyang tumakbo sa 21st, sa next na senatorial elections. Hindi pwede. Okay. I, I mean, six years lang yun na. Kunwari, wait, ulitin natin example. 19, 18, 17, 16. Kunwari, ano siya, nanalo siya ng 16th Congress, so nag-serve siya ng 16th at 17th Congress. Tapos, tumakbo ulit siya sa 18th Congress. Okay lang, kasi, ano, pwede siyang mag two consecutive so, ginamit niya na yung pangalawang consecutive niya. So, yung term niya is until 16, 17, 18, 19. Hang, until 19th. So, until de, ito lang. So, meaning sa next, bawal na siya. Tapos, yung ginawa niya, sa 19th, nag, ano, v- nag-resign siya or something, di ba? Na voluntary renunciation. Pwede na ba siyang tumakbo sa 21st? Kasi sabi niya, hindi ko naman sinerve yung Ano, uh, pwede ba siyang tumakbo sa 20th? Sabihin niya, hindi ko naman sinerve yung 19th Congress. Hindi pwede. Yung term. Okay? Yung term. Kahit hindi mo na-serve out, pero na-elect ka sa term na 6 years. Okay? Iba yung term sa tenure. Tenure kasi, yung actual stay mo eh. Like for example, term mo 6 years. Pero yung tenure mo is 4 years lang kasi for some reason na incapacitate ka hindi mo na ma-serve yung remaining 2 years so 10 year mo 4 years term mo 6 years yung pinag-uusapan natin dito is 2 consecutive terms terms hindi tenure now let's talk about the house of representatives the house of Rep- representatives is a chamber of Congress that is composed of not more than 250 members ignore yun na to sumobra na sila ng 250 unless otherwise fixed by law merong unless otherwise fixed by law consisting of district representatives and party list representatives so district representatives are elected from legislative districts ito yung inexplain ko na kanina a portion from the provinces cities and the metropolitan manila Metro Manila area by the constituents of such districts. Elected personally, by name, if there is a change of affiliation during the term, he or she does not lose seat, doesn't matter. In case of if my party or my affiliation doesn't change, 
during the term, okay lang. Doesn't matter kasi yung represent niya, hindi yung party niya eh. Yung represent niya is yung legislative district. In case of vacancy, a special election may be held provided that, okay, review sa kanina, the vacancy takes place at least one year before the next election. Pag senators, 18 months. Remember ah, baka isipin yung parang mas matagal yung kailangan pag pag congressman hindi remember one year is 12 months don't be confused senator 18 months meaning 12 12 months plus 3 ah bobo ko sa math 12 months plus 6 okay 12 months plus 6 meaning at least one year before the ano next election pag senator naman one year and six months one year and a half so dapat kapag may vacancy kay pwede lang special elections at least one year kapag ka sa house of representatives sa senate naman one year and six months a district representative is not prevented from running again for the same position if he or she lost during the previous election Party list representatives shall constitute 20% of the total number of the members of the House of Representatives, including those under the party list. Pero computation yan. Elected nationally with party list organizations gathering at least 2% of all the votes cast for the party list system, entitled to one seat, which is increased according to proportional representation but is in no way to exceed three seats per organization. Voted by party or organization, it is only when a party is entitled to representation that it designates who will sit as representative. A change in the affiliation within six months prior to the election prohibits the party list representative from sitting as representative under his or her new party or organization, which is different sa district. Bakat importante yung change na bawal, bawal siya maging representative kapag nag-change ng party or organization. Kasi, unlike sa legislative district or district representatives na inelect sila ng constituents ng legislative a uh, district nila kapag ka party list representative ka na elect ka dahil ni represent mo yung party mo so kung nag-change ka ng affiliation mo anong sense noon kasi ikaw nga yung representative ng party di ba so bawal ka na kasi hindi naman ikaw yung inelect diyan eh yung party nakaupo ka lang diyan kasi representative ka lang ng party pero yung party talagang binoto ng tao hindi ikaw Kapag party list representative ka. If there is a change or of affiliation during the term, he or she loses his or her seat and will be substituted by another qualified person in the party or organization based on the list submitted to the COMELEC. A party list representative cannot sit, cannot ha, if you ran and lost in the previous election, unlike sa legislative district na kapag natalo, okay lang naman. Pero pag party list, kapag talo ka na, Sa last election, bawal. Kasi, yung iniiwasan dito is, nasa party A ka, tumakbo ka as party list representative ng party A, natalo. So, nag-forum shopping ka ngayon. <laughs> Nanginap ka bagong party. No? Kasali ka na ngayon kay party B. Gusto mong palipat-lipat ka ng party. Kasi gusto mong maging congressman. Ginawa mo yung party na parang vehicle para sa political aspirations mo. Hindi ganun. Yung... Dapat, yung representative ng party list, hindi someone na ginagamit lang yung party list as a vehicle for political ambitions. Rather, to really be the bona fide representative of the party list voted by the people because the people want the advocacies of that party list to be heard sa Congress. So, the Constitution does not preclude the Congress from increasing its membership by passing a law other than a general reapportionment law, this a law converting a municipality in a highly urbanized city automatically creates a new legislative district and consequently increases the membership of the House of Representatives. A party list representative is in every sense an elected member of the House of Representatives. Hindi sila lesser beings dahil ang party list representative sila. They have the same 
deliberative rights, salaries, and emoluments as district representatives. Patas yan sila. They may only be removed either by expulsion with the concurrence of two-thirds of all members of the House of Representatives or by the Electoral Tribunal either through an election protest or co warranto proceeding. So, qualifications to be a congressman na district representative. Again, may dalawa kasi ang uri ng congressman. District representative at party list representative. The following are the continuing cla- classific- continuing qualifications for a person to be a district representative of the House of Representatives. First, natural born, citizen of the Philippines, same lang sa explanation earlier, at least 25 years of age on the day of the election, yung senators 35, pag district representative 25, able to read and write, same lang din sa senators, a registered voter in the district in which he shall be elected. So, ito, iba to. Siyempre, district representative siya. Pag senator kasi, hindi naman kailangan talagang sa district na yan, kasi irrelevant, national, you're elected national scale. Pagka ano naman, congressman na district representative, si nag elect sa'yo, hindi naman buong Pilipinas yung constituents mo sa legislative district mo, yun lang. So, dapat registered voter ka sa district na yun. And a resident thereof for a period of not less than one year immediately preceding the day of the election. So, sen- senators two years. So, ganito ako mag-memorize ng difference. Wala, no way around it kailangan i-memorize. First, natural born citizen of the Philippines. Both yun sa senator at sa congressman. Parehas lang. Iisipin mo, the way ako mag-memorize, hindi ako nag-mnemonics. Mnemonics. <laughs> Silent M. So, hindi ako nagaganon yung parang letters-letters na N, N, um, T, uh, uh, R, hindi, hindi ganon. Kasi nahirapan ako eh, sa dami ng kailangan mong i-memorize. Masasalpak mo ba lahat ng letters jan Lahat ng acronyms jan Baka magka-pare-parehas pa ng acronyms. So, hindi siya nag-work for me. If nag-work siya sa'yo, then okay. Pero sa akin, hindi. The way ako mag-memorize, iniintindi ko. Senador, congressman, di ba? Okay. Alam mo kung ano mga functions nila, yung mga ginagawa nila. Meron kang working knowledge na iintindihan mo. That's why very important na intindihin, hindi memorize. Comprehension. Kasi pag na-comprehend mo siya, nandiyan na lang siya sa utak mo. Dapat, natural born citizen of the Philippines sila. Malamang. Di ba? Public servant sila eh. Second, age. O, ano yung edad nila? Pag inisip mo kasi qualifications, isipin mo parang, di ba, qualification. So, andyan yung uh, mga qualities niya, mga, alam mo yun, parang job district, description, job description, parang, hindi job description, requirements, di ba? Qualifications nga. So, yon natural born citizen of the Philippines. Kailangan natural born. Parehas lang yun sila. Second, edad naman yung iisipin mo, ilang taon. Kasi, oh, covered ng citizenship eh. Bawal mo naman, bawal naman sex na male or female kasi discrimination yon So, pupunta ka naman na sa edad. So, pag senador, 35. Pag, ano, district representative, 25. Paano mo maalala yung 35 at 25? Tandaan mo na lang yung 35. Tapos, isipin mo, 25. O, diba? Magkalapit naman 35-25. 25, less than 10 years. Bakit? Mas bata si congressman kay senador kasi congressman, mas marami sila dyan, tapos mas maliit yung constituents niya, ba? Diba? Yung sa legislative district lang niya. So, i- i-associate natin yung age sa experience at sa wisdom. So, yung mas senior talaga is senador. Kasi dap, yung nire-represent mo na buong, buong Pilipinas, eh, yung iniintindi mo ng problema, hindi lang yung sa distrito nyo eh. Yung problema na ng Pilipinas eh, as a whole. So, kailangan mo ng level, mas mataas na level of maturity, ba diba? And experience, life experience. So, kailangan, ikaw yung mas matanda, ba diba? Pag senador ka. So, 35 si senator, 25 si congressman. Able to read and write, yun na naman yung isipin mo. Yun lang naman yung minimum eh. 
So, dapat marunong ka nga naman talaga magbasa at magsulat kung magiging senador at congressman ka kasi tagagawa ka ng batas eh. Paano ka gagawa ng batas na hindi ka marunong magbasa or magsulat? ba? Diba? Sorry, pero kailangan eh, ba? Diba? Paano ka makikipagdebate doon kung hindi ka marunong magbasa at magsulat? Bakit naman isipin mo bakit hindi bakit hindi ano college graduate or something? Kasi ang daming problema ng Pilipinas, 'di ba? Hindi nagma kung may expertise ka sa certain field. Ang importante, 'di ba? Yung tao naman magjo-judge sa iyo eh. Baka may iba kang mga bagay na kayang i-bring sa table na hindi lang sa educational attainment mo that that could allow you to do the job. So, yun yung reason. Able to read and write. Yeah. Next naman, dapat registered voter siya. ba? Diba? So, isipin mo, senador, registered voter, saan? May kailangan ba sa isang district or something? Hindi, kasi national siya ine-elect eh. Diba? Doesn't make sense. So, pag district representative naman, kailangan registered voter siya sa district niya kung saan siya nagpapa saan siya tumatakbo. 'Di ba? Kasi ang nonsense kung hindi. Parang ganun lang. Tapos next naman, resident siya dapat may tagal dapat. Hindi pwedeng bakit kailangan may duration kung kailan na may minimum na residency requirement. Kasi kung wala, edi palipat-lipat 'yan. Okay, trip kong mag tumakbo dito. Pera-pera lang. Ganon. Hindi. Paano mo malalaman yung... Paano mo marirepresent yung constituents mo? Ni, hindi ka nga nakatira doon. Hindi mo alam kung ano nangyayari doon. ba diba? So, ano yon Babayaran mo lang sila? Or, or what? ba diba? Parang ang nonsense. So, kailangan may, may residency requirement. So, ano yung residency requirement? Two years sa senador kasi mas senior nga sila. Tapos parang... Alam mo yun? Um, kailangan... Attuned sila... Diba? sa so, nangyayari dito sa Pilipinas for at least the past two years man lang, ba? Diba? Pag ano naman, pag district, at least one year. Mas mababa, ba? Diba? 35, 25, two years, one years, ganun. So, I hope that helps sa pag memorize ng mga ganitong bagay. Okay. Kasi I feel naman pag sa bar, although merong mga enumeration questions, I feel naman problems siya eh. Diba? Problems. Na parang, hindi ka naman papa-enumerate. May, merong problem. Tapos, sasagutin mo, ba diba? So, pag naiintindihan mo kasi, kahit hindi mo maalala yung lahat ng qualifications, pero pag naglagay siya ng edad dyan, like, 20 years old, maalala mo kasi naiintindihan mo, 25 yung kailangan. ba diba? Tapos, ano, mga ganyan. So, pag naiintindihan mo, okay lang, parang mare-remind ka ma feel mong parang may mali, ganun. Kahit di ka sure, pero at least, that, you know, that hunch. Ganyan. Kasi sa i-memorize mo yung just to memorize. Yun. At least, ano, you know, the thing about law, I realized, is that it has to make sense. Logically. Why? Because laws are made to make people's lives easier. To, ano, to, uh, Paano ba? Para ayusin yung relationship ng tao sa kapwa niya or tao towards the government, you know, yung yung relationships na yun. So, it has to make sense. Laws are not there just because it's meant to be followed. There's a reason why that law was made. Yung, yun na nga yung purpose ng legislative department eh, yung congress eh. Pag-isipan kung ano yung kailangan ng tao at gawa ng batas yun. That's why the law has to make sense. Kasi, it, the law was made to solve a problem. ba diba? To solve a problem or to avoid problems or to improve the lives of the people. So, it has to make sense sa practical point of view. Anyway, let's go to rules of apportionment of legislative districts. Okay. Under the Constitution, legislative districts shall be made in accordance with the number of respective inhabitants and on the basis of a uniform 
and progressive ratio. Each city with not less than 250,000 inhabitants shall have at least one representative. So according to jurisprudence, there is no specific provision in the Constitution that fixes fixes a 250,000 minimum population that must compose every legislative district. It is a requirement only for a city to be entitled a representative, but not so for a province. So city. The 250,000 minimum population requirement for cities only applies to its initial legislative district. It does not have, it does not have to increase its population by another 250,000 to be entitled to an additional district. Kasi pa din silang gumawa ng mga distrito nila dyan na karagdagan eh. Each province, irrespective of the number of inhabitants, is entitled to at least one representative. So regardless of the number of inhabitants, regardless of the population. So yung 250,000, Initial requirement yun para maging, para ma-entitle yung city sa isang legislative district representative. Pag may additional district siya, okay lang. Kahit hindi umabot ng 250,000. So, pwede siyang ma-entitle to additional district. Pag province naman, walang requirement na 250,000 or whatsoever. Basta province ka automatically entitled to one representative. Each legislative district shall compose, as far as practicable, of contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Very important. Contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. And reapportionment of legislative districts by Congress within three years following the return of every census. Alam niyo naman siguro yung census. So the power to create a district cannot be cannot ha, cannot be delegated to a regional or local legislative body because Congress is a national legislature and any increase in its allowable membership or in its incumbent membership through the creation of legislative districts must be embodied in a national law. Thus, in Sema v. Comelec, the Supreme Court invalidated Section 19, Article 6 of RA 9054, also known as the ARMM Law, insofar as it granted to the ARMM Regional Assembly the power to create provinces and cities, which could in effect result in the creation of legislative districts. The creation of legislative districts does not need confirmation by plebiscite if it does not involve the creation of an LGU. Pero syempre, if it involves the creation of an LGU, a plebiscite is necessary. So gerrymandering. It is the formation of one legislative district out of separate territories for the purpose of favoring a candidate or a party. That's why, pinatandaan ko sa inyo yung each legis- legislative district shall compose as far as practicable of contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Dapat magkadikit. Hindi pa ding dito, dito, dito. Tapos may mga district sa gitna. Hindi pa ding ganon. Dapat isang unit lang siya na adjacent para maging legislative district. Kapag kalat-kalat yan, gerrymandering yan, bawal yan. So, the Constitution proscribes, meaning bawal, prohibits gerrymandering as it mandates each legislative district to comprise as far as practicable, again, a contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Now, let's go to the qualifications to be a congressman na party list representative. Kasi napag-usapan natin yung district representative kanina. Again, continuing yung qualifications nito. So first, natural-born citizen, of course. Second, at least 25 years of age on the day of the election. Same lang sa district representatives, however. If yung party is a party that represents the youth sector, mga kabataan, ganyan, he or she must be at least 25, diba? Tama, at least 25 kasi yung requirement. So, same lang, at least 25, but, ito yung but niya, not more than 30 years old on the day of the election. So, pag simpleng party list member ka lang, 25 and up, pag youth sector yung party mo, 
dapat yung representative ng youth sector na party list dapat 25 to 30 years old on the day of the election. Pwede ba siyang maging 32, 33? Yes. Kapag ka naging 31 and up na siya during his or her term. Basta on the day of election, dapat 25 to 30 years old siya. Maging 31 na siya after. ba? Diba? Basta on the day, 30 siya. Maximum. Any youth sectoral representative who attains the age of 30 during his term shall be allowed to continue in office until the expiration of his term. Next, able to read and write. A registered voter. Kailangan bang sa isang district? Again, hindi. Kasi, elected sa national level yung party list representative. Yung party nila. Ine-elect ng lahat yan. So, irrelevant yung may registered voter siya sa particular district. Hindi kailangan. Basta registered voter lang siya. A resident of the Philippines for a period of not less than one year immediately preceding the day of the election. Same lang sa district representative. And a bona fide member of a party or organization which he seeks to represent for at least 90 days preceding the day of the election. If candidate changes affiliation within six months prior election day, he will be substituted. So, term of office for congressmen. Whether district, representative, or party list, representative. Parahas lang sila. Three years. Commencing at noon on the 30th day of June following their election. Term limit. No member of the House of Representatives shall serve for more than three consecutive terms. Sa Senate naman, two consecutive terms. Sa congressmen, three consecutive terms. Kasi tig three years lang sila. Ibig sabihin, three, six, nine. Yun, hanggang 9 lang max magkasunod. Kung magpahinga siya in between, okay lang. Basta hindi pwedeng 9 years, dire-diretso 3 terms, tapos mag-another 3 siya. Hindi, kailangan niyang magpahinga after ng 9 years na tuloy-tuloy na nakaupo siya. In the same way, sa kanina sa senators, voluntary renunciation of the office for any length of time shall not be considered as an interruption in the continuity of his service for the full term for which he was elected. So now let's talk about the party list system. It's a mechanism of proportional representation in the election of representatives to the House of Representatives from national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations or co- coalitions thereof registered with the COMELEC. The party list is not synonymous with that of the sectoral representation and the purpose of the party list system is to enable certain Filipino citizens, especially those belonging to marginalized and under-representative sectors, organizations, and parties to be elected to the House of Representatives. Again, bakit? Dapat inclusive. Kasi, again, yung purpose ng Congress is gumawa ng batas. I-represent yung mga tao. So, dapat lahat represented. Yun yung goal. Although, hindi naman lahat-lahat talaga marirepresent, pero dapat yung mga major na kailangang i-represent, dapat nare-represent. Well, kahit naman yung mga marginalized, di ba? Pero, majority yung labanan dito, eh, di ba? In our Republican government. Guidelines for screening party list applicants. Three different groups may participate in the party list system. We have national parties or organizations, regional parties or organizations, and sectoral parties or organizations. National parties or organizations and regional parties or organizations do not need to organize along sectoral lines and do not need to represent any marginalized and underrepresented sector. That's to require all national and regional parties under the party list system to represent the marginalized and underrepresented underrepresented is to deprive and exclude by judicial f- fee paano yung, paano yung ano branch pronunciation nito fiat, fiat, fiat sorry let's go check para sure fiat fee fiat yun nga, fiat okay by judicial fiat 
ideology-based and cause-oriented parties from the party list system. Political parties can participate in the party list elections provided they register under the party list system and do not field candidates in the legislative district elections. So a political party, <clears throat> whether major or not, that fields candidates in legislative district elections can participate in party list elections only through its sectoral wing that must separately register under the party list system. The sectoral wing is by itself an independent sectoral party and is like and and is like and do wait long. May typo ako sa notes. To the political party through a coalition. A political party refers to an organized group of citizens advocating an ide ideology or platform, principles and policies for the general conduct of government and which, as the most immediate means of securing their adoption, regularly nominates and supports certain certain leaders and certain supports Ano to? Supports its leaders and members as candidates for public office. It is a national party when its constituency is spread over the geographical territory of at least a majority of its regions. It is a regional party when its constituency is spread over the... What? Ang gulo. Ang gulo ng notes ko. Majority of its regions. Ayan, ayusin natin. The nominees of national and regional parties or organizations must be bona fide members of such parties and organizations. Any elected party list representative who changes political party or sectoral affiliation during his term of office shall forfeit his seat, provided that if he changes his political party or sectoral affiliation within six months before an election, he shall not be eligible for nomination as part list representative under his new party or organization. So, we discussed that in the earlier. In case of vacancy in the seats reserved for party list representatives, the vacancy shall be automatically filled by the next representative from the list of nominees in the order submitted to the COMELEC by the same party organization or coalition concerned concerned shall submit additional nominees. Purely sectoral parties or organizations may either be marginalized and underrepresented underrepresented or lacking in well-defined political constituencies. It is enough that their principal advocacy pertains to the special interest and concerns of their sector. Marginalized and underrepresented sectors are as follows. Handicapped, indigenous, cultural communities, fisher folk, labor, overseas workers, peasants, urban poor, or urban poor and veterans. Sectors that lack well-defined political constituencies include professionals, industry or trade groups, women, LGBTQ groups, elderly, youth, and other similar groups. A majority of the members of the sectoral parties or organization must belong to the marginalized and underrepresented sector they represent. The same is true for those who lack well-defined political constituencies. The nominees of sectoral parties or organizations must either belong to their respective sectors or must have a track record of advocacy for their respective sectors. And nominal regional and sectoral parties or organizations shall not be disqualified even if, even if some of their nominees are disqualified provided that they have at least one nominee who remains qualified. Kasi again... Yung ine-elect is yung party, not yung representative nila. So, parameters in the election of party lists. There are four parameters in the party list election in the Philippines. First, the 20% allocation. So, 20% of the total membership of the House of Representatives, DAO, is the maximum number of seats allocated for party list representatives. In other words, there is one party list na bubulol na ako, there is one party list seat for every four legislative district seats. The 2% threshold, a guaranteed seat 
for a party list organization garnering 2% of the total votes cast. The guaranteed seats shall be distributed in the first round of seat allocation to parties that receive at least 2% of the total party list votes. The Supreme Court in Banat v. Comelec struck down as unconstitutional the 2% threshold in the distribution of additional additional uh, meaning may 2% threshold para explain ko mamaya. Distribution of additional party list seats in the second clause of section 11 paragraph B of RA number 7941. The court held that the continued operation of the 2% threshold in the distribution of the additional seats frustrates the attainment of the permissive ceiling that 20% of the members of the House of Representatives shall consist of party list representatives. Proportional representation. The additional seats, that is the remaining seats, after the allocation of the guaranteed seats, shall be distributed to the party list organizations, including those that received less than 2% of the total voters. And three-seat cap. Each qualified party, regardless of the number of votes is it actually obtained, is entitled only to a maximum of three seats. Simplihan natin with updates. So, 20% allocation. Nasa consti yan. Total number ng ano, members sa Congress. Dapat 20% dyan. Uh, party list. So, alam natin kung ilan yung legislative district representatives. Kasi alam natin kung ilan yung legislative districts. Eh. Predictable yan. Yung question is yung 20%. So, just do the math. Kaya mo yung i-derive-derive na 20% of the whole like you know you know the number naman of legislative districts and then you put 20% and then, but basically what I said one party list seat for every four legislative district seats that's ano para madali ganun yun so yung number kasi ng legislative district seats nag hindi na yan ano eh, hindi yan yung sinabi na 250 lang or something. Nakalimutan ko. Di ba may sinabi dyan sa Consti? Kasi pwede yan ma-enlarge by law. Bakit kailangan enlarge? Kasi kahab- may creation eh of, of legislative districts over time since kailan yung Constitution 1987. Di ba? Since 1987, syempre dumami na yung districts. May mga bagong districts na na-created. Lumalaki din naman yung population. That's why. So, for every four, there's one party list. 2% threshold. Dati kasi, di ba may boboto ka ng party list? Marami yan. Lahat ng naka-2%, yun, sasalpak mo sa 20%. Sila yung mag-fill ng seats ng 20% na yan. So, lalagay mo sila dyan, yung mga lahat ng mga naka-2%. May rounds kasi yan, di ba? So, up to 3. So, pag naka-2% pag naka ka, pak, meron ka dyan. Tapos, ano, kaya pa. Meron pang ibang seats na available. Another, maglalagay ka na naman dyan. And then, another. Parang ganon. Pero, sabi sa Banat versus Comelec, na, kung kunwari may available seats pa, pero, hindi naka-2%. Yung party list na yun. Pero may space pa. Kailangan, ipasok mo rin sila. Hindi kailangan na at least 2% para makapasok sila. Irarank mo yun sa number of votes eh. So, kung sino may pinakamaraming boto, di ba, naubos mo na yung 2%, mga naka two, at least 2%. Tapos, maximum 3 seats lang eh, per party eh. So, tatlo lang per party So, kunwari yung mga naka-2%, yung mga maraming boto talaga, naka-3 seats na sila. Tapos, may mga natira pang seats. Ay, paano na yan? Hindi mo ibibigay sa ibang, ano, ibang party list? Ibibigay mo yung remaining. Irarank mo din sila kung sino may pinakamaraming boto. Ifi-fill mo talaga, kukumplituhin mo talaga yung 20% na yan. Hindi mo siya ili-leave empty. Ganun yung ibig sabihin nun. So... I guess that's it for the legislative department. Pero, hindi pa tayo tapos sa Article 6. Sobrang haba pala. Hindi ko na-predict na magiging ganito kahaba yung video na ito. To be honest, and I'm tired. 
Yung next video is legislative privileges and parliamentary immunities. Yun. Tapos, isas, maikli lang siya. So, isasama ko na rin yung sessions, quorum, and voting majorities. Kasama sa video na yan. And then, I'll make a separate video for the lawmaking process siguro. I think this deserves like a video na siya lang. Or, pag sobrang bilis ko naman matapos yung dalawa, then sure, um, baka isama ko na lang lawmaking process. Yung tatlong yun, yung immunities, tapos yung mga quorum, ganyan, with the lawmaking process. Sige, isang video na lang sila. Depende sa haba. Yun. Kaya naman siguro kung isang video i-compress. Kung hindi, edo isa-separate yung lawmaking process. Tapos, another video na separate for electoral tribunals and commission on appointments. Still, Article 6 to. The topic, Legislative Department. And then, separate video naman yung powers of Congress. Yeah. Yeah, kailangan separate siguro. Or, baka isama ko na din. I don't know. We'll see. But ito yung mga remaining topics for Article 6. And then, yeah, mahaba siya. Powers of Congress. Yep. Mahaba niya. Next is power of legislative investigation oversight function. Baka isama ko siya sa Powers of Congress. So that's gonna be a long ass video. And then, initiative and referendum. Do I have to? I don't think so, kasi feeling ko na ex na explain ko na exhaustively yung initiative at saka referendum sa first, right? Sa mga first videos. So yeah, and that's it. And then we move on to the executive department, which is shorter than legislative department. Thank God. All right, bye.